Good morning. Welcome to Hankins Custom Rifles. I'm Jeff Hankins and today I'm going to show you guys a little bit about Seiko extractors and let you know when your Remington bolt needs the extractor replaced. Now I put in a lot of these Seiko extractors and it just depends on what size bolt face you have on your bolt to what size extractor you need and this one here is for a Magnum so we're going to need a large Seiko extractor. You can get these from a couple of different places. I buy mine from Pacific Tool and Gauge. They come in a little kit like this with the extractor, the spring, and a little plunger to hold the spring in place. So the first thing you got to do is inspect your bolt to determine whether or not you need to replace the factory extractor. The factory extractor on the Remington bolt works wonderful most of the time, but when it fails, then you need to replace it. There are several reasons that would cause your factory extractor to fail. When you chamber a shell on the bolt face, it pushes the extractor over, and then once it goes beneath the clip, it allows the, the extractor has a little spring pressure in it so it can move back over and grab the rim of your shell casing. If it doesn't move back over to grab the rim, when you open the bolt, it's not going to come out of the gun chamber, so it's going to be stuck up in there. This one, there's several different things that can cause this thing to stick and not move back over. You can get a dent or a ding if you somehow, I've seen a ding in here before, where the little ding will prevent the spring from being able to push the extractor back over and grab the cartridge case. Most of the time, it's caused from rust or dirt getting in here. This one, I've already looked at it pretty close and I've determined that it's because of rust. Um, the extractors are made from carbon steel and they will rust up if you don't clean them. And this one here, I'm digging out a lot of dirt and rust on this here little punch. So you can see that on my finger right there. That's rust and dirt that I scraped off of here. But the way to check these things to see if they're working or not is to take a small punch like this and come in on the extractor right there where the, the hook is, if you want to call that a hook or a lip or an edge or whatever, and push in on it. If you push in on it with your punch, it should move in, and when you release the pressure, it should float back out. If it doesn't do that, then your extractor is not working properly, and eventually it's going to fail you out in the field somewhere so you need to get that fixed um, the best way to fix it is to put a Seiko extractor in it now you need a mill and a lathe and a torch and solder and the proper tools to put that in there with so you need your extractor kit that's one thing you got to have you got to make a little ring like this out of a piece of chrome molly steel and I usually make these out of old uh, chrome molly gun barrels because it's the right material and it's easy enough and I've got them laying around here. And to make a long story short, you've got to bore this bolt nose out, put this bushing in, solder it in place, and then remachine it back down to fit the cartridge case, mill a slot, drill a couple holes, put the Seiko extractor in, check it, make sure everything works, and then you're ready to go. Put your plunger back in. That, that has to come out to do the machine work. Now there's some guys out there that put these in with two-part epoxy. And I'm going to tell you right now that that's not going to hold. It might work for a while. It might hold it for a year. But eventually that's going to come out and then your whole job is trash. You'll have to start all over and do it again. So if you're not soldering these in there you're not doing it right. I've had a lot of people tell me that they, they epoxy them in and they fall out. I've had to repair some that guys have put these in and they epoxy them in there. And then, you know, once you oil your bolt up or you clean it, you shoot it a couple of times, that epoxy turns loose and this little extract, this little ring will fall out of there and then it, it's no longer useful. So I'm going to go over to the machines and put this Seiko extractor in this bolt. When I get it put in, I'll come back and show you guys the end results. Alright fellas, we're back. We've got the extractor put in. We've got the 
ring soldered in place, all the mill work's done, the extractor's installed. The bolt head has been re-blued and cleaned up to where it looks like a new one. And if you can see the extractor there in place, I don't know how well that shows up on the camera, but the extractor's in place. And when you've got that in there, you wanna be able to take your fingernail or a small punch or screwdriver, and you wanna be able to push that out and it comes right back in. That's the spring pressure that puts it back in place. You can check it with your shell casing by just setting the shell casing in there and the extractor or the ejector is removed still. I haven't put that back in yet. And um, with the ejector out, you can set your shell casing in and kind of tilt it and it pops in and the uh, Seiko extractor grabs it, pulls it out until you clear your, your chamber and your, um, your action cut out. And as soon as you clear it, the ejector kicks the cartridge off and it'll come off. But to check it to make sure it fits right, you should just be able to do that pretty easy. So for any of you guys out there that have extractor problems with your Remington bolts, just give me a holler and I can fix that problem for you pretty easy. I will tell you that 90% of the extractors that I put in are on magnum bolts. The reason I believe that the magnum bolts are having the biggest problem is they use a rivet to hold it in place and you can see right here where I had to drill out that little rivet and it's full of solder right now and the bluing it take a little bit of blue but it'll wipe off and then it'll become shiny like a you know solder looks like lead or something and um, they put that rivet in there and that holds the extractor in one spot keeps it from turning around because they don't have enough room in a magnum bolt face to put in a little indention on both sides and that little these little indentions on a standard bolt if you was you looking at a uh, 308 bolt face or a 223 bolt face they've got these little indentions that holds the extractor in place on the magnum they've already machined it out so big in diameter that they don't have enough room to put those indentions in there so they use this little rivet and that rivet prevents the extractor from being able to move on both sides so now you're limited to your flex is only on one side of the extractor and i really believe that that's the problem with the magnum bolt faces and why they stick more often than any others so the uh some of the older bolts back years ago they put rivets on all of them and i think they discovered that it was easier they didn't need to rivet them but on the magnum bolt faces, it still need to be riveted. But there's a good look at the extractor in place. And um, it's ready to go back to the customer. All I got to do is put the ejector back in there. And it's ready to box up and go back. So if you guys need one of these put in, just give me a holler. You can reach me on my website. That's HankinsCustomRifles.com. Or you can call me. The phone number's on the website. And if you got any questions, just give me a holler and we'll take care of your extraction and ejection problems. Till next time, we'll see you later. Y'all have a great day.